Good evening. Um, the Tyagaraja School of Management and Loyal Textiles welcome you to the celebration of the life of Sri Manikam Ramaswamy, Ramu as he was fondly known. On the eve of his 65th birthday, we remember him as a high achiever, a compassionate human being, someone of rare energy, sharp intellect, and candid opinions. Whether you agreed with him or whether it suited you or not. So we remember him with a smile. On this occasion, we have with us a very special guest of honor, Dr. B. K. Vanavarayar. Sri Vanavarayar was born into an aristocratic family in Polachi. He qualified as a barrister and later entered into business. Early on, he came under the influence of spiritual masters and political leaders, Swami Vivekananda and Mahatma Gandhi. In the spirit of nationalism and service, Sri Vanavarayar took charge as chairman of Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan Coimbatore in 1990. This is an organization committed to preserve and propagate the ancient wisdom of India. Promotion of the cultural heritage of India, preservation of this country's unique, diverse fabric also feature in his activities. He was in fact invited to the Vatican by Pope John Paul II to attend the day of prayer for peace in the world in 19, uh, no, sorry, in 2002. And I believe his speech was so well appreciated, they published it in the Vatican magazine as well. Being a part of the textile industry, he has contributed immensely to the industry at both regional and national levels. His contribution to education as president, NGM College Polachi, and chairman, Kumaraguru College of Technology, Coimbatore, is immense. He is also a much sought after orator. But we will leave all these two pages of introduction aside because today he, is, he has come here as a very dear friend of Ramu. Please welcome Sri Vanavarayan. Sri A. Velayan Giri, CEO, Loyal Textiles, will honor our guest. Welcome. We, oh, sorry. we invite Sri Vanavarayar to address the gathering. Podium okay for you? Yes, it's okay. <clears throat> can people see you? I can see them. <laughs> can you see Sri Vanavarayar? That's not important. I should see you. Thank you. Thank you, organizers, particularly my sister Varli and Vishala, for this opportunity to be here this evening and to talk to you. <clears throat> this is the third time I'm coming here. And every time, every time I come, I see a progress. <clears throat> and today I'm happy to know this is one among the best management schools of this region. And you all must be proud of that. <clears throat> but all of us, even in the midst of this celebration, 
we have some kind of a mixed feelings we are happy to celebrate the life of somebody whose life deserves to be celebrated but at the same time we are sad that he is not in in our midst i have known him very well for many years some of you youngsters students may not know much about him if you read his life his accomplishments i think that is enough for a management student you don't have to read anything more we have many successful businessmen all over but ramu was not one among them his world is not business and his dream is not the bottom line of his balance sheet but he thought beyond all that and that is why we are celebrating his life today <clears throat> don't worry that is what management is all about not everything happens the way we want but still we have to manage the situation are you able to hear me are you able to hear me i am ramu is younger to me but i learned a lot from him i admired him for many reasons one thing very striking about him was when most of us think in the same way ramu thought differently and didn't stop there he acted courageously most of us don't do much thinking much less out of box thinking but ramu thought a lot and thought differently and that transcended his business his family and everything he reached out to the community <clears throat> he was an ardent student of vedanta and the vedic vision had a big influence on him can you hear me If you want to listen to me you can As I told you he was an ardent student of Vedanta and he imbibed the vision of Vedanta in him and he stood by dharma in everything He was a crusader against all forms of injustice he spoke his mind unmindful of its implications he never compromised with anything no matter what be the gain or the loss at times he was the most misunderstood person but i understood him that's why i have the privilege to stand here and speak to you but in general people misunderstood him because as i told you he thought differently when one thinks differently one is bound to be mistaken but he never cared for that 
he was the same throughout and today we rate him very high he has a big network of friends and well wishers and all of them miss him a lot and today very soon you are going to see a dance drama and the theme is mahatma you will be wondering why the organizers chose this theme the theme of mahatma how is it relevant at a time when we have almost forgotten the man nobody thinks of him in fact sometimes we say he is not relevant even i in some intellectual circles people say the mahatma is no more relevant but what do you mean by mahatma how gandhi became a mahatma the younger generation should know it was gurudev rabindranath tagore who gave this title to him otherwise he was mohandas garamchand gandhi but tagore called him as mahatma and gandhi said i am not a mahatma i am an alpatma i am a very ordinary person so you can't call me as mahatma but tagore called him a mahatma when we talk of mahatma in india we think of gandhi so we think to become a mahatma one has to be a mass leader who could galvanize the masses for one common cause and lead the nation in a struggle to liberate itself from the colonial powers and finally emerge as the father of the nation and the tallest personality of the 20th century of the world the time magazine has accepted that there was a tussle who should be the tallest man was it einstein or gandhi it was finally agreed that gandhi is the tallest man of the 20th century are you youngsters not tempted to give a hand for that you should but i will give you a definition of mahatma what it means to be a mahatma you don't have to be a gandhi like person to become a mahatma it's not that difficult so there is a definition by virtue of which one can be a mahatma the definition is just simple this was said by swami vivekananda him i call a mahatma whose heart bleeds for the poor the weak and the vulnerable that's all you don't have to lead an agitation against the colonial power and liberate a country you liberate yourself and if your heart bleeds for the weak the poor and the vulnerable any of us can become a mahatma this is the definition of vivekananda and my friend ramu i want straight away call him a mahatma but i can tell you he was in pursuit of that high stature his heart really bleeded for the poor the weak and the vulnerable he cared for his workers he cared for the cotton farmers he cared for the handloom workers he cared for the society he cared for the nation he had a global outlook a secular outlook he could transcend everything and care for every everybody that way i would say he is close to it 
but I will not in a haste call him so. But I'll tell you one thing, in years to come, more and more you do a research on that man one day, that day may not be very far off. I will say that he will be in that bracket one day. You can be proud of that. I wish he had stayed on for some more time. Not for his sake or his family's sake, but for the sake of the society. Every time I go to Chennai, there's always a dinner meeting at his residence. And we used to be chatting for hours. And not about textile industry, not about management education, but about the nation. And in the invitation, I don't know who drafted it. Who drafted the invitation, I don't know. One among you perhaps. Is it you? Somebody drafted it. A beautiful summing up of Ramu is there. Look at this, listen to this carefully. He was an upright industrialist, a passionate educationist, a caring humanist, a spirited public activist and a humble spiritualist. May I know who is that person who drafted this? Who is it? You. I salute you, sir. You deserve to be the director of this great institution. And you should be here for another minimum hundred years. Can I read it again for you youngsters? Your founder. He was an upright industrialist, a passionate educationist, a caring humanist, a spirited public activist and above all a humble spiritualist. Fabulously drafted director. My hats off to you. Ramu was not a Gandhian in the academic sense. Neither a scholar in Gandhian studies. But knowingly or unknowingly, he was a Gandhian and healed the Gandhian way. I am going to prove it now. The basic doctrines of Mahatma Gandhi are only two. For you youngsters, you don't have to read big, big books to understand Mahatma Gandhi. It's enough you know the two basic doctrines of the Mahatma Gandhi, you have understood Gandhi. The two are simple living and high thinking. Can you understand what I am saying? Simple living and high thinking. No extravagant living and no mean thinking. Simple living and high thinking. That was Ramu. And ends do not justify the means. Ends do not justify the means. This was very close to Mahatma Gandhi. It's not enough you achieve something in life that makes you great. But you got to achieve it through the rightful means. These are the two basic doctrines of Mahatma Gandhi. Simple living, high thinking. You may be a multi-millionaire, no problem. But learn to lead a humble life. You are not evaluated by the car you travel, by the clothes you wear or with the house you live. No, never. Particularly in India, austerity is always respected. Great men of India lived very austere life. I have no time to elaborate. So simple living, high thinking, ends do not justify the means. I was speaking to Valli yesterday, I know where she is. Ah, I checked up with Valli. Can I say Valli that your husband symbolizes these two? Yes, she said. Give a hand to that lady. Because I can tell you one thing. If Ramu is acclaimed so high now, it is all because of that one lady who stood behind him. If she is one of those women who, who spent half the time in a retail textile shop and half the time in a retail jewellery, 
Ramu could not have achieved all this. It was she who supported him through and through. My salutations to you, lady, for what you have done. And, and God will always be with you. You have a huge challenge in hand. I tell you, Ramu will guide you from wherever he is and you will be extremely successful in the years to come and to Vishala also. Ramu was a fearless crusader. Ramu was a fearless crusader. He never minced words. The director should know. Maybe Mr. Willingiri will know. Working with him is not easy. Even for me it was not easy. For nobody it will be easy because he was a different kind of a person. He spoke his mind, unmindful of the implications, his clarity of thought, his courage of conviction and his commitment to the cause is something unparalleled, I would say. And now, in a few minutes from now, we are going to watch this ballet on Mahatma Gandhi. Again, I got to compliment the organizers for having chosen this theme. They could have those chosen any other theme. But this is the theme, particularly for you young students, get to know Mahatma Gandhi. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that as well. It is now four decades, or rather six or more decades since Gandhi passed away. And today we have almost forgotten him. But in, in, in London, in the Parliament Square, they have erected a, a nine-foot bronze statue of Mahatma Gandhi next to Churchill. In between Churchill and Nelson Mandela in the London time, London, in, in, in the Parliament Square in London stands our Mahatma Gandhi. But here we have forgotten. We have forgotten him. We think he is no more relevant. He came to get us freedom. He got us freedom. He went away. Now be done with that. Let us move on. We don't need the man anymore. That is what the modern economists are saying. Because we are wedded to market economy. Director, please bear with me. I, am, I don't subscribe to that. I am an old timer. I still feel Mahatma Gandhi's economics will alone save humanity. I am going to tell you that. Now, we have distanced ourselves totally from Mahatma Gandhi. Now, I will just read out to you the challenges humanity is facing today. Please think about it, friends. Look at the challenges. Racial discrimination. Religious intolerance, political indecency, economic marginalization, rampant materialism, social upheavals, cultural degradations, cutthroat competition, loss of inner peace and leisure, ecological imbalance, terrorism. Director, do you have solution for all this? Will your students address all these? Yes, they have to. It's not enough, friends, you think of your career, your salary, and then settle down happily, preferably run away from India and settle somewhere, preferably in US, and, and never to come back to India. I don't think this business school should produce that kind of people. Instead, you all should go anywhere you want. Make all the money you can, but come back to India and serve this land of Mahatma Gandhi. That is what is expected out of you. Mahatma Gandhi is not a man of the past. He is a man of the present and a man of the future. Yes, I am going to tell you that. My request to director, have a paper on Mahatma Gandhi, sir. In our management school, we have done it as an elective. Introduce that great man to these people. There cannot be a better manager than Mahatma Gandhi. World over. How could he liberate this country? Imagine the India 70, 80 years back. He didn't have a cell phone. He didn't have an email. He didn't have the WhatsApp or the Facebook. Nothing. He didn't have the television. How could he reach out to this huge, vast nation and galvanize the entire nation and gave them the confidence to challenge the mighty colonial power? Now to you, director. His economics... Simple, Mahatma Gandhi's economics, creation of wealth through fair means, equitable distribution of the same, without endangering peace within and without, 
paving the way for a sustainable economic development guaranteeing lasting peace and happiness can there be a better economic order than this anywhere in the world we have some friends from overseas so if you have please tell me creation of wealth through fair means equitable distribution of the same without endangering peace within and without paving the way for a sustainable economic development ultimately guaranteeing lasting peace and happiness if only we had followed this economic doctrine believe me those challenges i narrated would not have been there now ultimately all management mr director should begin from the art of managing oneself there has to be a paper on art of self management and my sister valli is an expert in that she is a student of swami dayananda saraswati and swami paramatma madam you got to do something introduce the quit essence of the vedanta in your management school tell them what it is to be a human being how rare it is to be a human being and how it has to be lived lived for a purpose not to further one's own development in life but to the development of the entire society finding the divinity and manifesting the same is swami dayananda's vision finding the divinity and manifesting the divinity in your thought word and deed should not that be a lesson if you want to if you want to produce managers your syllabus is okay if you want to make leaders then what i say has to be there how many of you want to be just managers and not leaders lift your hands not one how many of you want to be business leaders and not to content with managers lift your hands look at that most of them are still thinking that's because they don't know anything about it so finally tomorrow we are going to unveil the bust of a friend ramu i'm eagerly looking forward to have another glimpse of that man that little statue will remind us forever what should be the vision for the nation it's not just economic development it has to be a holistic human development that is the vision of the mahatma and the vision of ramu now the dance is going to begin i understand it's going to be a fabulous treat trying to recapture the life and message and accomplishments of that great mahatma i'm as eager as all of you to watch it and in the process at the end of it when we go back home let us make an honest attempt to find the mahatma in us there is a mahatma in us the mahatma has not gone anywhere the mahatma is in us all we need to do young friends every morning take 10 minutes off sit in a quiet corner and do a little contemplation and ask yourselves where you are heading towards what is the mission of life what has to be the achievement then then all education will be complete i i thank uh, madam for giving me this wonderful opportunity i never thought about it i don't deserve it also but it was so nice of you to have asked me to share a few of my thoughts about that my friend ramu and i can tell you he will live on live on live on forever in our hearts and guide us and give us the strength to do the rest of the job thank you very much wish you all a very happy evening thank you